Now, student, here is the question number 73. What is the ratio of reducing agent to the oxidizing agent? If the following reaction is correctly balanced, you have the reaction in which ammonia is reacting with oxygen to give you NO and H2O. You need to identify the ratio of reducing agent to oxidizing agent. You first of all, you need to balance this. And after balancing, you have to identify which substance is oxidizing agent, which is the reducing agent. Then only we will be able to solve this question. So, let's solve this. The balanced chemical equation. What do you have? Ammonia, NH3, reacting with oxygen, giving you NO, nitric oxide, and along with that, H2O. If you balance this reaction, you will find out that here should be 4 NH3 and this should be 5 O2 and 4 NO and 6 H2O. To solve such type of question, your balancing skills should be good, right? Now, in this case, you need to identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. With the help of oxidation numbers, we can do so. NH3. So, nitrogen has the oxidation number here minus 3. Further, in oxygen, it has oxidation number 0, elemental state it is NO. Here, the oxidation number of nitrogen is plus 2. While, if I talk about H2O, oxygen has the oxidation number minus 2. Is it clear? Now, in this case, you can clearly see the oxidation number of nitrogen is increasing. So, this is getting oxidized. And if it is getting oxidized, it means this is a process of oxidation that is taking place here. Let me mark the process. One is this that is taking place. And the second process that is taking place here is from 0 to minus 2. And in this case, increase in oxidation number. So, that is why it is a process of oxidation. And there is a decrease in oxidation number. That is why the process of reduction. Ammonia is getting oxidized. It means it is a reducing agent in this case. While oxygen is getting reduced. That is why oxygen is oxidizing agent. And what you need to find out? The ratio of the reducing agent to the oxidizing agent in terms of moles you need to find out. So, you can simply do this by considering the ratio of reducing agent to oxidizing agent is 4 is to 5. And yes, this is your correct answer also. 4 is to 5 and that I need to just mark here also in the given options. Let me mark it and this is option A. So, you can simply write here the correct answer. Now, the turn is for question number 74. Now, students, here is the question number 74. Arrange the following solutions in increasing hydronium ion concentrations. The solutions are 0.1 molar HCl, 0.1 molar H2SO4, 0.001 molar NH4OH, ammonium hydroxide it is, further 0.001 molar calcium hydroxide. So, four different solutions are there. P and Q are acidic solutions while R and S are basic solution. Now, you need to just arrange them on the basis of their increasing hydronium ion concentration. So, let us find out the hydronium ion concentrations in these solutions. So, we are just going to solve this question and the very first thing is 0.1 molar HCl. So, what would be the hydronium ion concentration? Whatever is the molarity of this aqueous solution, same molarity of the H plus ion or the hydronium ion would be there in the solution. So, in this case, the hydronium ion concentration would be 0.1 or simply you can say 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 1 molar. This is hydronium ion concentration. I will write here this is hydronium ion concentration that I am writing here. Further, the next case, the first case was P. 
now if i talk about the next case that is q here is the concentration point 1 molar h2so4 very simple to analyze that one molecule of h2so4 consists of two h plus ion two hydronium ions would be produced in that case similarly if i talk about point 1 molar h2so4 the concentration of hydronium ion in this case will becomes 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 1 because point 1 it is that's why so this would be the concentration of hydronium ion in this solution third is r and the concentration is 0.001 molar NH4OH ammonium hydroxide in case of base if you are just finding the hydronium ion concentration so very simple thing that you should remember that first we will find out the hydroxide ion concentration OH minus ion concentration we will find out that would be equal to 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 molar now with the help of this we can find out the hydronium ion concentration also this would be equal to kw 10 raised to the power minus 14 divided by 10 raised to the power minus 3 and if you are doing so then definitely this hydronium ion concentration in this case becomes 10 raised to the power minus 11 molar so this is the hydronium ion concentration in case of R. Last case, the solution S and that is 0.001 molar calcium hydroxide. In this case also you need to find out the hydronium ion concentration. What you will do? First of all, OH minus ion concentration we will find. One molecule has two OH minus ion on the basis of this we are just going to find the hydronium ion concentration see the concentration of OH minus ion 10 raised to the power minus 3 into 2 this would be this is the OH minus ion concentration and with the help of this we can also find out the hydronium ion concentration in a similar way this would be equal to 10 raised to the power minus 14 divided by 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 this way and if you solve this you will find out it is 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 12. So least concentration of hydronium ion is there in 0.001 molar calcium hydroxide after that the turn is there for 0.001 molar ammonium hydroxide solution and then there would be the turn for P. 0.1 molar HCl and then 0.1 molar H2SO4 on the basis of this if you mark then you will find out the correct answer should be Q maximum concentration of hydronium ion then there would be P then R and S is this option given in this question you need to just check here check and analyze you will see that this is not given in any of the option that's why no option is correct in this particular question now after this there's the turn for next question now student here is the question number 75 a zinc rod was dipped in 100 centimeter cube of one molar copper chloride solution after certain time the molarity of cu2 plus ions in the solution was found to be 0.8 molar if the weight of the zinc rod is 20 gram then the molarity of the chloride ions is you might be thinking that a number of calculations you have to do in this question but no my dear student you need to just analyze the concept what is said here see zinc rod you have taken it was dipped in 100 centimeter cube of one molar copper chloride solution this is the solution in which chloride ions are present and at the answer you need to find out the molarity of the chloride ions only so only one source of chloride ion is there that is copper chloride when you dipped zinc rod in copper chloride solution there would be the displacement reaction zinc will displace copper and it results in the formation of zinc chloride now 
after certain time the molarity of the cu2 plus ion in the solution was found to be 0.8 molar but there is no change in the molarity of the chloride ion because the only source is copper chloride so very simple to represent this reaction here i'm just writing for you cucl2 you have zinc rod is dipped in it this is aqueous solution of cucl2 solid rod you dipped in it and there would be the formation of zinc chloride that's aqueous and copper is displaced this is the reaction that's taking place now the only source of chloride ion is cucl2 and if you look at this formula you'll analyze one molecule consists of two chloride ions it means if i talk about the concentration of copper chloride that is one molar so if the concentration of chloride is concentration of copper chloride is one molar then definitely the chloride ion concentration in this case would be two molar double of this right on this basis i can simply choose the correct option and that is clearly given here in option a so my correct answer for this question is option a i hope it is clear now let's take question number 76